What's up guys, I'm Tony Woodark. I'm a wedding photographer out of Southern California and today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Contact 645. Let's get into it. First up, we have to talk about the lens. The lens I have is the Zeiss Planar 80mm 2.0. So if you're not familiar with medium format, this camera is a 6x4.5, so it's 6 centimeters by 4.5 centimeters. And so it's not the same equivalent as a 35mm uh, camera. So an 80mm on a medium format camera like this is equivalent to a 50mm on a 35mm medium uh, full frame camera. Sorry, that's a little confusing, but basically that's to say 80 millimeters on this is, is similar to a 50 millimeter focal length. This is the Zeiss lens, and this is the reason that you would want this camera. This lens right here is everything you'd ever want. It's kind of the perfect focal length, tack sharp, wide open at 2.0 on a medium format camera, gives you this beautiful buttery bokeh that's really like nothing else you've ever seen. Um, people describe it as painterly 3D look. There's a lot of different explanations of, of what that look gives you, but it's second to none. And it's really why you'd want this whole camera. The camera body itself is good. It's well made and comfortable, but really it's all about this lens. I wanna show you guys some examples of what I'm talking about with this lens. Let's check it out. Contact 645 is you can see here how big the negative compared to a 35 millimeter full frame is. So you're getting two and a half times the size of the negative, so much larger scans. Another nice thing is it actually writes the shutter speed and the aperture on here. So I had shot this at 1 125th of a second at 2.0, and I used my 80 millimeter lens. So it records all that information on every single negative. So just super nice to have that uh, for your records. And if you kind of messed up a shot, you could see what you did wrong on there. So this is at one two thousandth of a second at 2.0. Um, this is at one one thousandth of a second at 2.0. So pretty cool to have all that there. 
Along with this lens, they sell a couple different sizes of Zeiss lenses. I recently just got the 2.8 45mm lens. I wanted something a bit wider than that. Just really when I'm traveling, I love to shoot medium format travel landscape photos, but at that 80 millimeter uh, focal length, it's a little bit tight for landscape photos. And so this 45 millimeter is equivalent to, I think 28 millimeters, so it's pretty wide. Um, so this is gonna be a great lens. I haven't even tried it yet, so I, I can't give you a review on this, but I'm taking it with me next week to Hawaii. So this is a good time for me to say subscribe to this channel if you're interested in seeing more of my work and you'll see some of my Hawaii work on this lens in the next couple weeks, so thanks. Also like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Appreciate it, thank you. Okay, back to this camera. So you've got your lens, you've got your um, viewfinder prism. Um, I have the split viewfinder prism, so when you look through it, you see two different things and you kind of line it up to nail focus. Um, I also recently got the Maxwell screen, which is basically that screen inside there. Um, you send it to this guy, Bill Maxwell, and he does some sort of process to it to give it a little bit more contrast, a little bit more brightness, and just make it better. It's a little bit dark um, at first if you just don't have the Maxwell screen, and so it's hard to nail focus. Um, the autofocus is pretty good, but with only 16 frames per roll, you wanna make sure you're nailing focus on every frame just with the costs involved. So that Maxwell screen is around like 400 bucks, but it's worth it just in terms of the efficiency of hit rate that you'll get on future rolls. Um, so I just recently got it. I've only shot a couple rolls with it since getting it, but my accuracy has gone up by probably about 15 to 20% in terms of focus, especially because I like to shoot at 2.8 or 2.0 pretty wide open with this lens so yeah i really recommend the maxwell screen if you're looking into that i tried to make a video comparison of my screen before and screen after didn't really use any scientific study but it was really hard to put that video comparison together so just take my word for it that it is it is better it's a lot brighter it's um more contrast so it just gives you that sharper look through the screen. So it's a process that he does and I highly recommend it. Okay, so like I said, you have the lens here, then you have the body, and then on the back here you have a film back. So you can take this slide out, stick that right in. If you have multiple film backs, you could be flipping between two of them so that you could um, maybe shoot one roll of black and white or one roll of something else and then you can pop off this back. I never even take it off, so I'm like struggling right now. There you go. So this is the film back right here, and then you can see the shutter there. It's a leaf shutter. Um, so yeah, you can have different backs. These run about 500 bucks, I think, with an insert, or maybe $500 separately. And then you just gotta make sure that you really put it on well when you put it back. Okay, that's the film back. So inside of here, you pop that open and you have what's called an insert. And so this is a little insert that you pull out and this is what you load your film on and then it goes in there and you can see I have the film slide um, blocking the shutter right now. So this is the insert, this is a vacuum insert. There's two different types of inserts. Um, this insert is a 220 film that was modified to fit 120 but basically what you do is you open this up put this empty roll down here put the new roll in the top wrap the film around load it up wind it up and then you insert it back into the camera And when you insert it back into the camera, you hear a little, you hear that little click and that's when you know it's loaded. I'm gonna move my film insert back behind. So now the film is being exposed to the 
lens um, when I open the shutter. That's pretty much it, the film inserts. It's a good system because you can have film preloaded and you can pop those in and it's all good. It's nice for that to be able to have multiple inserts and fly through different rolls of film and just kind of be prepared. The bad part is, is um, the film, if it's not tight, if your insert isn't like um, well serviced, it can make a little bit of waves in your film and anywhere that it's kind of bubbling up or whatever, it, it will be blurry on your film. And so um, it's called like a film flatness issue if you look it up and, and you'll see that with contacts um, inserts. So that's something that you need to be aware of when you're looking at your film and then you can send it to different places that will service your inserts and tighten it up and make sure that the um, film's tight. You also wanna make sure that you're winding the film really tight when you're um, putting it into the insert. So that's kind of the drawback of the film inserts. Also too, if there's any dust or debris that gets in there, um, you can get scratches on your film, which I guess it can happen in any camera, but I found that um, it happens quite a bit in this. So you gotta kind of really take care of this, make sure no dust gets in there, blow it out, um, make sure your inserts are clean at all times and um, you won't experience those problems. One cool feature about this camera is the ability to do double exposures. So on the side here, there's a little thing, little switch that I have covered up actually with a piece of gaff tape. So right there, there's that little button and you just flick that down and while it's down, it will continue to shoot on that that same frame for as many times as you want. So you could do a double, triple, quadruple exposure. So basically you'd flick that, take a photo, and then flick it off and then take the next photo so that it would wind after that if you only wanna do a double exposure. Um, a little bit confusing to say, but you'll, you'll get it pretty quick. But it's nice that it has that ability if you do wanna do double exposures. Some other features, it's got these little plugs right here. Um, for an additional camera strap. I use this with the hold fast in the back, the tripod mount, so I screw in my hold fast there. I bought these little knockoff um, lugs right here, and so I can connect my safety lanyard to this. These were like 20 bucks. That's the thing with the Contact 645 is everything is super expensive for it um, because they're not making this stuff anymore and they're not servicing anymore, so there's just, it's a highly demanded camera, and so, all the parts are super expensive. They're also really well made too, but they're expensive. So like those plugs were like 80 bucks or something for this little thing that connects there. So I bought these knockoff ones on eBay for like 20 bucks. Some things about the camera body itself. Um, you have an exposure compensation dial, which is cool if you use the in viewfinder meter. I externally meter all my shots, even, even though this is accurate in there. Um, I just have gotten in the habit of that. I also like to expose for shadows and just have a little bit more, more control over my metering, so I like to do that externally. The shutter speed goes from eight seconds all the way to one four thousandth of a second, so a lot of range right there. Um, you turn on the camera right there, and then back here you have the op option and the back button focus. So you can hear that. That's the manual focus. It's pretty loud, but it also is pretty accurate too. Um, I usually use the autofocus to get me the right distance and then I manually focus for that last little bit just to make sure I'm tack sharp. Um, that way of doing it drains the battery a lot quicker. The batteries that it takes are the two CR5 batteries which are pretty expensive but um, I don't know, I guess I just got in a habit of it so it takes these batteries right here, the two CR5 batteries, which are like, in America, they're about nine bucks a pop or so. Um, so that will last you about 20 to 40 rolls, depending on how much you're using the um, autofocus in the back. The autofocus is pretty good though. It's not quick, but it's not slow. It's, it's like a medium autofocus on maybe the slower side, but it is accurate, so you can hear that. and then I usually manual focus like that for the final bit. Um, you can hear the shutter. Really nice sounding, clean. Um, that was at 1 60th of a second. Let's do one 1,000th. Okay, some extra accessories that I have with this. 
Um, I just bought a lens hood. I bought the contacts metal lens hood. You can do any lens hood though that fits a 72 millimeter thread. Um, I just wanted the contacts one because it's metal and it's nice. But again, expensive. This was like 100 bucks, which is stupid for a lens hood. But I don't use lens filters on my cameras. And so I use that kind of as my, this lens hood is kind of my safeguard in terms of like tapping anything. And so I wanted a metal one or the strongest one I could get to kind of block um, anything from coming at the lens. I also have this um, battery grip, which takes, I don't even know, I've never used it. I think it takes double A's. Yeah, it takes double A's and it connects where this goes. So it connects there like that. If I can actually, go, oh, and then it winds in. Which, this is nice because you can shoot portrait like this. So that's why the guy I bought it from had it, was so that he, he always shot mostly portrait. So it's just nice to have that ability instead of having your hand cocked like that, is just like this. So that was really nice. Which I like it for that, but it makes it even heavier and this thing's already pretty heavy. So I just prefer to have it be less weight, especially because I'm carrying it for eight or 10 hours when I'm shooting a wedding day. So yeah, that's kind of this accessory, which is nice. I also have multiple inserts, which is great for a wedding day. So I can just kind of fly between different rolls of film. And when I get a break, I can load up all of them and have them ready to go. I also have a Polaroid back that connects instead of the film back and it exposes it to uh, Fujifilm 100 that you tear apart, which is super expensive to get. It's great to have that if I'm shooting something really important like a wedding and I can first test the shutter to make sure the shutter's firing properly. Um, it exposes the puller right back. I instantly know if the shutter's firing properly. So um, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's a feature that you need to have, but it's nice to have if you really are counting on this as your main camera, um, as this does run into shutter issues at some point. Um, this just recently got a replaced shutter, so we're in a good spot with it. I don't really need to worry about it that much at this point. This camera overall can be finicky. All of a sudden it will stop working. You just need to check that everything is connected properly. Turn it off, reconnect the battery. Um, check to make sure that the film back's connected properly. Just if any of those sensors are off a little bit, it will stop working. So yeah, it's a little scary in that regard because it is fully dependent on electronics, um, but it's contacts, it's super well made. So yeah, you have that. Overall, this camera's expensive. They're going for about three or $4,000 online. I bought this system with all of these extras, four inserts, the film back, Polaroid back, uh, camera grip, um, my lens, all of that for $5,000, which wasn't a crazy deal, but it had a brand new shutter put into it. It was in mint condition. Um, so yeah, ridiculously expensive, but honestly, I've never seen a lens like this, and so it's completely worth the system just for this lens. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend picking one up if you're interested in getting a contacts. You can get usually the body and the lens and the film back and one insert for around $3,500. I'll link some places you can check below. I asked in a Facebook group I'm a part of some questions that you have about the Contact 645, so I wanted to answer those. Nelson asked what um, the battery life is like, and I briefly mentioned that the battery life, um, you can get about 20 rolls or so, um, a little bit more if you don't use autofocus as much, and a little less probably if you use autofocus a lot. Um, lens compatibility, Thomas was asking about that. Um, basically, you, you have to use Contact 645 lenses, they're all Zeiss, um, they make a 45 millimeter, which I mentioned earlier. I have the 80 millimeter, which is kind of the only one you need. And then there's the 140 millimeter as well. They might make a few others, but those are the popular ones. Some cheaper alternatives. Um, Sang was asking about that. You can check out the Mamiya 64582. That's what Jeremy Chu uses and he loves it. It's a lot cheaper than the Contact 645. You can also check out the Hasselblad H1, I believe it is. Um, Pentax 645. All of those are a lot cheaper alternatives, but the lens is not gonna be as good as this ICE 80 millimeter, but those are um, definitely entry level, medium format cameras that have a lot of similar characteristics um, in terms of the body itself and the system. It's obviously all medium format, but really the lens is gonna be the differentiator. Why is it so expensive? Andy King was asking. 
That's a great question. I think it's just supply and demand. There's um, more demand than there are 645s running around. And so you just have a, um, you have people like Jose Villa who swear by this system and other photographers um, who do incredible work with this system. And so it's raised the popularity and made the prices kind of skyrocket. Um, so yeah, that's the tough part. Tough part is that there's very few places that service these and there's, there's not really many parts going around. So um, yeah, it, it's an expensive system to shoot, but I think pretty much anyone you ever spoke to why they shoot that system is because of the Zeiss lens. Someone asked the good and bad things. I think I've covered that quite a bit, but really the lens is the good. The bad are um, the film flatness issues that I think you can experience in a lot of different medium format cameras, um, potential scratches on the negative, uh, battery life isn't amazing, um, autofocus isn't quick. Those are kind of the negatives of it. It's a heavy, bulky system, just like most medium formats besides maybe a Mamiya 7 or 6. But honestly, all those drawbacks don't outweigh the pro of the Zeiss lens. I think once you take a photo wide open with that lens and you experience the bokeh, there's nothing that compares and it, you'll kind of be sucked in. And then Kenneth asked who repairs them. I'll leave a list of people that repair them below. I would definitely recommend joining the Contact 645 film photography group that I'm a part of. Um, there's a lot of great example photos of people that are being sh uh, shared in there, but there's also people troubleshooting issues that they're having with the camera, and also there's great lists of recommendations of places to check out, so I'll leave some links to that below. Check out some photos, check out me shooting with it, and see what you think, and if you have any questions at all about this camera, drop them below. Um, this continues to be my main film camera and I love it and highly recommend it. So yeah, thanks.